<laughs> All right. <laughs> That's awesome. So that fish took twice. That was a very generous fish, unless there was a pair of them there. Uh, but that is a large mouth, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Not a super big bass, but big enough for me. I've done a lot of fishing, and I love, love, love fishing for large mouth. Now, a lot of folks, if you're a trout fisherman, you're like, ah, Joe, why would I want to get like into large mouth fishing? Number one, it's super accessible. We're just out on a public lake in a boat that the whole thing costs less than 2000 bucks you could do this in a little raft a pontoon boat a water master a float tube even and you have access to these wonderful public waters and you don't have to learn how to row white water or anything like that the cool thing about bass too is like the casting is pretty demanding we'll go through some tips and tactics and stuff and i don't mean to make it sound hard when i say demanding but if you make a good cast you're likely to get rewarded you don't get to disguise a bad cast like you can in a river with a mend or feeding line or something like that. So for me, uh, that gets really, really uh, kind of intriguing because the better cast I throw, I know that there's going to be a very linear relationship uh, with my success. So bass are a great species. We'll talk about uh, how to fish them on poppers, how to fish them on floating lines, sinking lines, and a whole bunch of other strategies and try to help get you trained up so you too can go have an absolute killer time bass fishing. Additionally, the gear set, we'll talk about gear of course, but you don't have to buy waders, you don't have to buy boots, you don't have to go when it's cold. If you're an angler that's gonna fish during those warmer months from mid-May to September, bass should definitely be on your list. Today is gonna be all about largemouth and I'm gonna teach you how to catch them. Not everybody has riverboat rowing experience or skills, and that's where bass boats or a little John boat like this come, into hand, come in handy. This is a really cheap boat. My teenage sons bought this from a neighbor for 400 bucks. They built a little deck system for it. That cost them about 80 to 100 bucks, and we got a trailer for 1200 bucks. We're into this thing for maybe 2000 bucks at most, and it's a very effective boat for little bass lakes like this. So. That's a great option for people. You can also use boats like little water masters. You could use a drift boat like your clacker craft or your hide or your adipose or any type of little watercraft that can get you on the lake is totally acceptable for bass fishing. The way we have our John boat set up is I put a, a cooler with a seat on it up front there, which is kind of cool, but you could just set a cooler there. Uh, there's a little bit of storage underneath. These rods lay out really, really well. I think an anchor is underestimated as to how handy it is, especially in a little bit, bit of a breeze. Go ahead and come on back. And then uh, for my, this is my son's boat. Uh, my, both my sons, they got this from Santa Claus uh, one year. So they got a Minn Kota trolling motor and a battery, but the whole package is really cheap. It's also safe. Maybe you're not comfortable rowing down, you know, a big Western river or something like that, or you don't live in the Rockies for crying out loud or the Cascades. This is a really safe, easy way to make great fishing accessible is getting just some type of watercraft that's affordable and you can justify the expense and then just get out on the lake and use it. But this is what we're doing. It's a very accessible watercraft, I think, for anybody's budget uh, to be able to get into. So now we talk about the basic setup for bass. But before I get into the details, one thing I wanna point out is when you're looking for potential bass lakes, look for small water. You don't wanna compete with uh, the big ranger bass boats and guys throwing hardware and spinner baits. I've just found the smaller water that I can get on with a fly rod, the better I do. I'm not real picky about my size of bass. If I can catch you know, one, two and three pound bass, I'm very happy. Heck, even a half pound bass is pretty good for me. So look for small water where you're not competing with big combustion engines and big boats. And uh, the smaller water you can find, the less water skiers and jet skiers and things you're gonna, you're gonna compete with. Um, a good bass rod should be a tough rod, something in that six to eight weight range, seven being pretty optimal, nine feet long. Once you get over nine feet, it's very awkward. Um, it's too hard on your arm and just accurate casting is better done with a short rod. In fact, the shorter the rod, the better, uh, in my opinion. There's a few rods that are down as, little, as short as eight feet. I don't want to get too specific into the models of rods. We sell a ton of them at Reds, and I'm going to put some links in the video description. I'm using my, my nine foot six weight R8. 
and it's got this nice fighting butt on there which I can use for bringing a bass out of the, the brush or I usually um, am more using it to get my fly out of the brush and to, to, to be very true with you. But I do like to have a fighting butt on my bass rods. You're gonna use a floating line 90% of the time. This is a bank robber from Rio. It's good for streamer fishing for trout with a floating line. It does pretty good with these bigger flies, but the more specific bass taper lines are gonna be a lot easier for you to cast, especially if you're not quite as capable a caster uh, as I am. The, the thicker tapers turn the big flies like this one over. So that line is a very good line and I'll put some links to other lines in the video description. As far as leaders go, I like a 12 pound terminal tippet down here and a bass specific leader is built to turn over these big flies so that you can make a very accurate cast along the structure. There will be some links to the video description on that. We'll talk flies in the different sections, but also just learning how to tie a loop knot on there is gonna be important. So. You don't need a really high-end rod. Just spend a couple hundred bucks and get a rod that's a you know a seven weight being optimal. The Reddington Field uh, Bass Field Kit is excellent. Floating line 90% of the time. We will talk sink tips later, but that's not essential. <laughs> things got a little tougher. I'm sure you can hear the wind in the mic, but we've had to do a couple of different things. Solid bass. I'll take it got a little tougher we've had to anchor the boat just because the wind has been blowing us around and go to just a really really slow retrieve and uh, I am I am delighted in these conditions to get that bass right there and that fly was just barely moving that's a devil's devil dog for brainy so I switched to a weighted fly and just started to really slow creep it and we're on anchor so that the wind can't blow us around but I'll take it. That's a nice hard fighting bass. Good, good take, good catch in these conditions. We decided to use the anchor because the wind, and I've had to really slow everything down. So I'm letting it sink, 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 about five seconds. And I'm just doing these really gradual strips there. Oh man, that was a nice strike right there. But I'm just doing these really slow controlled strips, and really letting that fly settle make a nice pause because when it sinks that's when they seem to bite and we throw another one over here throwing it right up near the shore sinking 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 four or five seconds again and I'm gonna get my hands out because I want a long slow strip for this long and slow and they usually eat right there and then I'll find them when I come tight right there Boy, it'd be nice to get that hookup on video to show you kind of what that's like, but let me throw one more and we'll see if we can't get one. Get some live hookup. It's not been easy fishing. A storm rolled in. It got really cold. It's not the forecast we were expecting for today, but you just never know what you're going to get. But keeping the boat really stable in largemouth fishing is important. We're, we're having a team up. We're two of us are out here, but we're just fishing one angler at a time. And you've got to run the boat or you got to anchor just to keep the boat stable. And then one more tip is the boat is swinging around quite a bit. One thing we do is we've got the anchor on the front and sometimes we'll set our trolling motor to go in reverse to just pull the other way like two anchors because now we're kind of we're kind of moving around a little bit. So that's another tip for you. But uh, yeah, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. I can't emphasize that enough with these largemouth. All right, they're getting smaller. That's not the trend I was hoping for. But now that I'm figuring out the presentation, I'm starting to get a lot more bites, even if they're smaller. I'm very happy about that. Oh, he's going under the boat. <laughs> This is so much fun. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that is so much fun. And that cast was just a dime. That feels so good. I put it right in between a couple of those reeds. And I'm sticking with this devil, devil dog. That seems to be getting them today. Um, but yeah, I just love that, man. That's such good casting fun. And I love working the fly against habitat like that. You know, not just not just kind of blindly 
blindly drifting it along. But if you've done a lot of fly fishing, I think you'll really appreciate when you can put casts into these tiny little slits in the reeds and then get rewarded like that. It's a pretty good time. All right, it's very critical on this fly to fish the drop. We've got suspended um, kind of a raft to cover there, which means there's going to be a nice drop off. And so I'm going to try to put that fly right in there close. I'm going to measure carefully and hopefully drop it right there. It looks pretty good. And that nice sink is so important. Now, he might not eat it right on the sink, but right after that, as I come tight, I really want to be patient. Okay, so now I'm going to work it like a clock. That was my first shot there. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to work that and just very delicate drop, sinking, 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 sinking. Just like that, little twitch, little twitch, little twitch. Maybe he's following it. Okay, so I shot 11, I shot 12, and now I'm going to shoot out here to about 1. Just try to put as close as I can, and that sink is really important. So I watch the tip of my fly line on my leader to see if the bass picks it up while it's on the sink. Nothing there. Let me go out to 2 o'clock. Nothing, and I'll stretch one more all the way out there and see if I can't get one all the way out there on the right, the right half of the spot. Okay, no, no uh, hookup on video. We always like when that happens, but um, a tip is if you're gonna be by yourself, it's just using an anchor. Uh, it really makes it nice to be very steady and you can get into a little cove like this and you can work the whole clock for about five minutes, move the boat down 100 feet, do the same thing again. Be the best one of the day. Okay, with these bass, don't worry about getting them to the reel. You kind of have to strip fast as they bust out away from the bank. I'm going to net this one, Hayden. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. Look at that, man. Good thing I had the long-handled net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. So that's good fun. Let me get him unhooked. Let me get him unhooked. But yeah, these bass, they, they come charging away from the bank. You know, you hook them way in there tight. And a lot of times, they're first, uh, let me give him a little drink, and then we'll get a look at him. There we go. Another nice kind of cookie cutter. You know, I'm gonna go two pounds on that. Solid two pounds. We'll let him go. Well, hopefully these tips were helpful today. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. We get to do a lot of fly fishing. Uh, Hayden, who works at Reds, is my camera guy today. And we do a lot of fly fishing. We love this bass fishing. So hopefully the things that we taught you today are helpful for you getting out bass fishing because I just think there is an immense amount of opportunity for some great fly fishing that is often overlooked when people just have trout exclusively on their brain. So good luck out there. I hope you do well. Go get them.